May 31, 2011, marked a seismic event in the literary world with the release of David Baldacci's blockbuster Zero Day. This gripping tale of a daring heist at the Fort Knox Gold Repository sent shockwaves through society, sparking renewed interest in America's most iconic bullion vault and raising concerns about its security. Today, in this riveting episode, we delve deep into this captivating topic. Watch till the end to uncover all the secrets of Fort Knox and unravel the truth about whether its gold reserves still exist and why authorities vehemently oppose auditing its contents. So subscribe to the channel and let's dive in. We'll be broken up in the open field. Many of us fondly remember the thrilling action movie starring Sean Connery as the iconic James Bond, facing off against the cunning Goldfinger who sought to seize America's entire gold reserve at Fort Knox. But is it really possible? Does Fort Knox actually hold real gold? Let's embark on a quest to find the answers to these complex questions together. So let's go over some facts you probably didn't know. Interesting details. Fort Knox is a 109,000-acre base that holds the U.S. government's Federal Gold Reserve and the Army Human Resources Center of Excellence. The building is named after General Henry Knox, the Chief of Artillery in the Continental Army and the United States' first Secretary of War. The original construction cost of the Gold Bullion Depository was $560,000, which would be around $10 million in today's money. It was built with more than 4,200 cubic yards of concrete and 16,000 cubic feet of granite, with 750 tons of reinforced steel and 670 tons of structural steel. The main vault door cannot be breached by explosives, blow torches, or drills. It is 21 inches thick and weighs more than 20 tons. Fort Knox has the world's hardest shell, with walls featuring four-foot-thick granite lined with cement, steel, and fireproof material. The highest amount of gold ever stored in Fort Knox is 649.6 million ounces, the reserve the U.S. had in 1941. While famous for its gold reserves, Fort Knox also houses valuable art, historical documents, and even the Magna Carta. These treasures aren't just secured by the gold vault, but by a separate facility with equally formidable security measures. What about security? Fort Knox is one of the most secure vaults in the United States and worldwide. The defensive system of Fort Knox includes state-of-the-art virtual tripwires, biometric IDs, flooding tunnels, landmines, and even help from space. Over 30,000 soldiers, 300 tanks, helicopters, and personnel carriers are present for safety. Even more, Door is able to withstand a nuclear blast, while the surrounding area boasts sophisticated detection systems and heavily armed patrols. Tunnel Trouble In 1974, a daring attempt to steal gold involved digging a tunnel towards the vault. Thankfully, authorities discovered the plot before any gold was taken. This incident further solidified the vault's reputation as impregnable. Did you know that the depository building at Fort Knox is constructed on bedrock and anchored into it via a concrete and steel foundation to prevent tunneling into the vaults? The fort houses the United States Bullion Depository, which is said to contain over 4,500 tons of gold bullion currently valued at over $200 billion. Is gold needed? In August 1971, President Richard Nixon formally unpegged the U.S. dollar from gold, meaning the dollar was no longer convertible into bullion. This decision marked the end of the gold standard in the U.S., and the dollar became a free-floating currency, measured only by comparing it to other world currencies. This move had significant implications for the global financial system as it transitioned the U.S. dollar from a currency backed by gold to a fiat currency. The shift away from the gold standard allowed for more flexibility in monetary policy, but also led to concerns about currency stability and increased government debt. Simply put, the Fed can print as many dollars as it wants, and the fact that gold exists, and with it the fact that Fort Knox exists, no longer affects the fundamentals of U.S. monetary policy. Auditing is forbidden. 
Very few visitors have ever been inside the vaults themselves. Even the President needs permission from the Secretary of the Treasury to enter. In fact, there has not been a comprehensive audit of America's gold reserves at Fort Knox and elsewhere since the 1950s. The most recent significant event related to the inspection of the gold at Fort Knox was in 1974, when a group of reporters was allowed to briefly view the gold. Since then, there have been calls for a full and complete audit of the U.S. gold reserves, including those from Reverend Ron Paul in 2010 and 2011. Despite these calls, there has not been a comprehensive audit of the gold reserves at Fort Knox in recent decades. Minister Wizard In 2017, U.S. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, along with other politicians, visited the gold vault at Fort Knox, which was the first time civilians were allowed inside in over 40 years. In Mnuchin's words, he made sure the gold was in place and intact. But is that still true? The Minister of Finance is not an expert in precious metals and did not have the necessary equipment and time. Could he really have reliably established that the gold was there and not a fake? Could he have measured the volume of gold stock and its compliance with the declared values with a single glance? Wouldn't it be better to allow a full audit of all gold to reassure both the public and international partners? Tungsten instead of gold? Not long ago, the tabloid sensationalized a story claiming that the U.S. had sold 5,600 gold bars to China. According to reports, skeptical Chinese buyers drilled into some bars, revealing tungsten inside, with only a thin layer of gold on the surface. It was alleged that this pseudo-gold was confiscated from Fort Knox, where supposedly only fake bars reside. But let's debunk this deliberate falsehood. Firstly, the U.S. gold reserves are overseen by the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, which doesn't directly sell gold to foreign nations. Gold transactions may occur via private markets or the International Monetary Fund, IMF, but the U.S. government itself isn't involved in such sales. Secondly, while tungsten is indeed used to counterfeit gold, there's no evidence of any such incident involving the U.S. and China. In a recent revelation, a staggering 83 tons of fake gold bars were used to secure $3 billion in loans in China. This became China's largest gold loan fraud case, but any potential link to the U.S. government is nothing more than a figment of tabloid reporters' fevered imaginations. Mysterious Fed Order Yet another sensation rocking the digital airwaves suggests that the Federal Reserve ordered the production of 1.5 million tungsten bars, thinly coated with gold. However, the real issue lies not only in the absence of corresponding government or Treasury Department documents, but in the fact that the Federal Reserve does not possess the authority to directly commission the manufacturing of goods like tungsten bars. In this age, Fabricating and disseminating such fake news has become all too easy, and sadly, they often achieve at least part of their objective, sowing doubt, distrust, and social upheaval. As we conclude this riveting journey behind the curtains of Fort Knox, it's worth recalling an unspoken rule. Where there's big money, there's big lies. Success always attracts its fair share of detractors, and they'll stop at nothing to undermine it. This holds true for the USA. Unfortunately, there are still dictatorial regimes in the world willing to spend their last dime to destabilize American society. But the truth is, the state's interests lie in strengthening its gold reserves, not squandering them. And bolstering the dollar is aided by a robust economy, abundant resources, and a leading global reputation. So let's leave the tranquility pills to our adversaries. Fort Knox has been and will remain a steadfast bastion of our strength. That's all the facts for today. We'll get back to you in a couple days with a new dizzying investigation. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to always be aware of the most mysterious and amazing events of civilization.